Charge your time, Crystal, and let's review this week's TV show cards. Hello Trekkies, it's time to close out Strange New World's first season with episode 10, A Quality of Mercy. As always, spoilers ahead. Well, this was an interesting way to close out a season, force Pike to deal with the trauma of knowing his fate while simultaneously showing him why his destiny must remain what it is. Because, as Soren once put it, time is the fire in which we burn. It's a predator, and that line seems to be embodied here. Though, as a whole, that's not the Star Trek reference that defines this episode. This is a direct redress of the balance of terror. Except this time, Pike is in the big chair after being sent seven years in the future by his alternate 1985 Back to the Future self. He's even dropped into the first scene from Balance of Terror in the Enterprise Little Scene Chapel, performing a marriage ceremony, and honestly, the casting of the not-to-be-wed couple is spot on. But that leads me to my first dislike. The casting of James Kirk is, well, one of the worst recastings to date in Trek. I get that what we see is an alternate future, but I can't imagine Kirk being the captain of Farragut over Enterprise is what causes him to feel so flat as an actor, or look a heck of a lot more like Jim Carrey playing Jim Kirk, but unfortunately without the comedic genius, or even the comedic mediocrity of William Shatner. Nearly every scene he's in takes me out of this episode due to his poor depiction of the arguably most iconic captain in all of Trek. Now that that's out of the way, there is quite a bit I do like about this episode, and I'll award the first point for bringing back the idea of multiple insignia based on deployment. The Delta emblem was only meant to be the symbol for the Enterprise, though it would later become retcon to be the overall Federation seal. So the Boreth monk sent George Clooney-looking alternate Pike in a monster maroon uniform to tell his younger self to quit messing with time. I've got a like for the overall premise of this episode. It ties so many pieces of known canon together in a really brilliant way, and centers around Pike literally coming face to face with his tragic future. I've got a like for Uhura's future self in her flared collar. Nice little nods to TOS, and she looks stunning and confident. I've got another like in the same vein for Spock's single raised eyebrow as the Romulans reveal themselves to look like Vulcans. This is directly lifted from Balance of Terror, and the little bell sound effect helps sell this classic Spock character trait. I'll get all these wonderful callbacks out of the way now, with another like for the voice of Scotty directing Spock's repairs in the classic ladder tube set. Ortegas feels out of place in this one, constantly questioning Pike and seeming to have an axe to grind that she doesn't portray in her seven-year younger self. This appears to be lifting the traits of Crewman Stiles, whose ancestors fought in the Romulan War in what would have been Enterprise's fifth season. I just wish we had gotten the backstory like Styles to where her will to kill Romulans comes from. So Pike rolls a couple of speech challenges in this one with varying degrees of success with Romulans, first talking down the Romulan commander with one of his famous speeches, but then rolling a critical fail when the classic Balance of Terror plot diverges pretty hard, and the Romulan Praetor shows up with a fleet. I've got a like for some new classes of Romulan ships, and in general, the CGI ship battles were done excellently here. Even though they somehow get away from the battle, as off-screen Scotty must have performed a miracle getting the warp drive back online, it's only now that Pike realizes that saving himself isn't worth Spock's death or dismemberment. The Predator has teeth and will exact its revenge. As Jim goes over his history, we get another little tie-in with J.J. Cannon by mentioning his father served on the USS Kelvin. There's a look at his service record as well, most of which we know. The only thing I believe is new is the assignment to the USS Republic, which in DS9's Valiant we learn is an academy training vessel that hadn't left the Terran system since about this time in history. And being that this is listed after assignment to Starfleet Academy, I'm going to assume Kirk did some Academy instruction for some amount of time. We end this on a sad note, as Una's genetic augmentation finally catches up with her, as Pike's lady friend and captain of the Cuyahoga takes her into custody and this doesn't look good for number one. Though Pike just learned the virtue of not changing the future, I doubt this excellent first officer is going to be gone this quickly. I have one small dislike in the grand scheme of Trek, but a 
big one from MasterChef Pike. I know this is just a TV show that gets props as they need them, but for the amount we know Pike cooks, why does his cast iron skillet look never used and brand new? A chef as attached to food as Pike is would have a well-seasoned pan by now. This episode felt a bit odd for a season finale, but this is quite a fun roller coaster. The season itself is the best season of Trek since DS9 went off the air. I said that about Picard Season 2, and this followed it up in even better form. In the nearly 800 episodes of live-action Star Trek, I would give this one an initial ranking range between 200 and 300. If Kirk had been better cast, I think it would have been higher for me. This is the first time since last Halloween we don't know when our next fix of Trek is coming. Though it appears Lower Decks will be coming back with its season 3 soon. And like Picard's family, apparently the Boimlers also grow grapes. I'm looking forward to a break from getting up at 3am to do initial thoughts. Though I'm going to take this time to do some other video ideas I've had for a while, like an ultimate crossover video highlighting all the actors in both Star Trek and Quantum Leap. And check out Trek's Best and Worst Space Battles released yesterday. We'll see you back on Initial Thoughts when Trek comes back. Until then, I've been your host, Dustin Wing.